Here we have the conventions for three products, the teaser trailer, poster and magazine. The teaser trailer is around 30 to 60 seconds long and will take snippets from the film and play them in a montage edit to make our teaser trailer. Our poster uses a main image as the focal point to grab the audience's attention. The magazine also uses a main image accompanied by what's inside the magazine to try and sell the film and the magazine. Starting with our teaser trailer, the duration was about 1 minute and 24 seconds long. We originally anticipated it being around 30 to 60 seconds. However, Star Wars and Spectre also over the minute mark, at Star Wars being 1 minute 30 and Spectre being 1 minute 36, so it's ok to break this convention. Usually in the teaser trailers we see a montage edit. They take the best scenes that the viewer is going to enjoy, either action or comedy, depending on what genre it is, and put it together in the teaser trailer. For us, however, we felt our narrative was too complicated to just mix and match it together in a montage edit. We use continuity editing. Spectre, for example, has a really complicated narrative, so using continuity editing it makes it easier to tell the story rather than piling it together in a montage. We tried to tell the narrative and tell our story as much as possible in order to get the audience's attention. We thought by doing this we might accidentally give away the storyline or give away too much in the film, but actually it's worked in our favour in the sense it's created more questions about it rather than answering them. In terms of text and graphical elements, we weren't able to use any graphics in our final teaser trailer piece. This is because we didn't know any software how to make the graphics and we didn't risk it. However, we were able to keep our Cycle of Survival title looking as close as it can to the Hunger Games, whilst making our V bigger to make a brand identity and recognisable amongst other titles. We spent a lot of our time working on sound for our teaser trailer. This is because we needed some background music and we needed our voiceover to explain our complicated narrative. We used GarageBand to make our background music. We kept a simple melody and when the pace of the clips and the shots picked up, we used a drum beat to emphasise the drama that was happening during the teaser trailer. We've seen that Interstellar have used a voiceover in order to make their teaser trailer more dramatic. We decided to use it to explain our narrative as already stated. For us, the voiceover explains the relationship between the characters and it gives you an idea of why the map is so important for them. Finally, we also use sound effects such as the click of the remote at the beginning. This means we've used both diegetic and non-diegetic sounds. This is our poster in the top left. The film title was Cycle of Survival. We kept the same front for our free promotional products in order to create a brand identity. We kept the title central and just below the halfway point. If we could change something now, I'd make the title a little bit smaller. We didn't use any actors' names on our poster. However, we've seen this done before, such as the film Fury, where they used Brad Pitt's name right at the top of the poster. Our tagline was don't trust anyone. We need to keep it short, sweet and effective. Edge of Tomorrow, a film with Tom Cruise, used the tagline live, die, repeat. This was very effective and it was a, it was a good point of their promotional campaign. It is therefore an example of why a good tagline is needed. The billing block is a major part of what makes our poster look official and gives it the finishing touch. We copied the Hunger Games' billing block. This is because it's in the correct order and therefore will be accurate. We didn't use review or ratings on our poster. A lot of other posters do use this to show what critics think of their film, however we didn't feel it was necessary on ours. The main image is the most important thing on the poster, it's what catches the audience attention. Our main image contains our three main characters. We took them from separate photos that we'd taken and pieced them together on a black background to start with. We added the fire element and the greenery and trains element. We turned the opacity down on both of them and the two main characters in order to get that see for effect. The fire represents the action and danger side of the film and the greenery and the trees represents the sort of survival. We then blended the black background with the main images in order to make it look like it's one picture. Using all the elements of this poster we can now infer what the genre was. Of course we know it was going to be an action and adventure film. 
but from the main image and the titles, we can see that it's looking more like an action-adventure film now. This is the Hunger Games poster that we used to inspire our own poster and our villain block. This is our film magazine in the top left. You can see from all the images around it that we use different elements and combine them together to make our film magazine. Online we found the total film masthead, the barcode and we used the Hunger Games magazine in order to get the lure and the puff. We also have our strap lines at the bottom and the top of the magazine. At the top, those are other classmates films and at the bottom, that's what's going to be inside the magazine. We follow the conventions of the Total Film magazines, such as the Pacific Rim one, in order to get our arrangements for our Total Film magazine. If I could change one thing again, I'd change the size of our title, just so that I could fit more text around it and advertise more what's going on in the magazine, just to make it look more official. You can see the Hunger Games Total Film magazine that we based ours upon. It was a huge help in the way we constructed and the way we made our cover. Hunger Games have the same target audience as our film, so when we found out they did a magazine cover for Total Film, we thought that it would be the best idea for us to use the Total Film magazine as our magazine. I expect the products to be different between a Hollywood blockbuster such as The Hunger Games and an independent film such as Shifty. I expect a Hollywood blockbuster such as Hunger Games to follow all of the conventions because that's what makes the film and the teaser trailer and all the products a success. Whereas an independent film, such as Shifty, can change the conventions in order to change people's perceptions of the film industry. Things I noticed for Shifty was there was a lack of media products. There was only one poster, no teaser trailer and no magazine cover. This is probably because there's a different audience between a Hollywood blockbuster and independent film. Someone who watches independent films more likely to appreciate the film for the film rather than all the products and services that go with it. Hunger Games was 100% made to make profit, so therefore they're going to abide to the conventions and make posters and make teaser trailers in order to promote their film to turn views of the poster into ticket sales. In an action-adventure film, we usually see a chase or a fight scene that usually gets worse and worse as the film goes along. This applies for the teaser trailer and the Hunger Games and Cycle of Survival. Both the trailers, Hunger Games and Cycle of Survival, focus on this build-up of tension in order to get to the fight scene or get to this chase scene that they have in the Hunger Games. This is shown in the diagram below. The setting in an action-adventure genre is usually exciting. The Hunger Games and Cycle of Survival set in a woodland area. This location shows some sort of adventure. Typically of an action-adventure genre, there's a quest to fulfill themselves. For example, in the Hunger Games, it's the quest to survive the game itself. And Cycle of Survival is using the map to find the treasure and escape. 